This is titled N-acetylcysteine protects bladder epithelial cells from bacterial invasion. I like how they call it an invasion and displays anti-biofilm activity against urinary tract bacterial pathogens. So long story short, they discuss using antibiotics, which we really, we can dive into that, but really that is the conventional approach for this stuff. And the problem with antibiotics in the UTI conversation is the antibiotic resistance problem. And so you'll have women that'll do these formulas whether it's in this study, they're talking about using Cipro, which is dangerous stuff. I don't like the sound of yep. Cipro at all for many of the, you know, potential permanent tendon issues and other side effects associated with it. Yeah. Cipro is in the fluoroquinolone family, which can negatively impact mitochondria and connective tissue. So if you're going to use a antibiotic, try to use one, not in the fluoroquinolone family, maybe amoxicillin or tetracycline. Just talk to your MD if you're going to go that route to avoid that antibiotic at least. Yeah, but here, here's a conclusion. NAC is a non-toxic antibiofilm agent and can prevent cell invasion formation by uropathogens. So once again, NAC for the win. This stuff's incredible. Yep. And again, with antibiotics, like I'm always about, let's do the more natural things first and kind of go least invasive to more invasive, right? And antibiotics would be the top part of the more invasive side. This is interesting. I guess this was an Australian researcher or doctor who put this study together. They're saying here that in Australia, you know, there's an estimated 150 million infections and that this is 12% of hospitalizations. UTIs are? For UTIs. Wow. Yeah. Holy smokes. And 30% of all women have a recurrent episode of UTI. And then, of course, the problem with the UTI, right? UTI kind of sounds like, oh, it's not too bad. But, I mean, when this stuff gets up and infects your bladder, that gets really bad. And then it can even further ascend and then infect your kidneys. And then that's when you get into really big trouble. And that's where they talk about sepsis and some of these other literally potentially fatal infections from UTI. So when UTI is kind of one of those, it sounds like it's just like this easy, not a big deal, but, but it could turn into a big deal. Yeah. And so just kind of like out of the gates, like what are the symptoms of UTIs, right? Obviously like pain, pain during urination, you can see a lot of cloudiness in the urine, right? Potentially even blood in the urine. It can have a really strong smell as well. Uh, it could even create pelvic pain in that area, that pelvic or pubic area for sure. It can also move up. So Women have a very short urethra, unlike men. So that urinary tract can go to the bladder very, very easy just because the distance is really short. So once it goes to the bladder, right, you'll see pelvic pressure. You may see blood in the urine, um, frequent painful urination, lower abdominal discomfort. And then, of course, it can continue going up from there into the kidneys. And that's where you'll start noticing a lot of back pain, flank pain. Um, you may notice starting to get chills and fever and maybe nausea and vomiting. And, and usually once it starts to get into the bladder and the kidneys, you know, you may want to look at seeing conventional medicine for, for an antibiotic at that point, definitely in the kidneys. But I mean, I, I think if people can be educated about this and be on top of it, I think you can avoid a lot of that upstage uh, conventional need for medications.